What up, world? It's Mac. Tell me something slick and make it stick. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm back. Oh, I'm back with another exciting episode. But this episode going to come with a punch to it. And I mean a real goddamn punch. Because I got one of my favorite people in the world, my buddy, Travis Gambardella from fucking Boston. He's a certified boxer. We're going to talk all things boxing. We're going to talk about the greatest champs of all time, his upcoming fights. He going to give me some tips just in case I got to hit somebody with that upper hand real quick and get up up off me. But anyway, sit tight. Hey, go get your cigar. Go get whatever you need to get, hey, to get relaxed. Get you a drink. Cause this is going to be a conversation you don't want to miss. Me and my man Trav, we back in a second. So God, Trav, we back. We back. Welcome back. Make sure you guys hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to Cigar Chaps and Mac. Nobody giving you real content like we're doing it over here. My guy, my guy from the Bean Town, Travis is in the building. (laughs) (laughs) I miss this dude. Trav, how you feeling, man? Tell the people how you feeling out there, Trav. Oh, I'm feeling good, man. Just getting out of the gym over here in Haverhill, right outside of Boston. I, I grew up over in Revere, another a suburb from Boston. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling good, man. You know, I have my health. I got I got my health and everything's good. Woke up today, got to chase it, chase what I love to do. Ooh. Trav, before we get to the ring, man, take me back to growing up. I had the pleasure of talking with you, man. You know, you know, we worked together in a previous lifetime. And I had the pleasure, man, of talking to you, man. Tell us, let's give us, paint the, my audience a little bit about what shaped you. I know mom raised you, but it's you and yep. your bro. But I don't want to, t- I, I know the story. It's a great story, but I want you to be able to kind of explain how you became the man you became, man. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. So uh, I grew up, you know, I, uh, my mom was a single mom. Uh, she had my brother and I, I got older brother, John. He's, he's two years older than me. And uh, yeah, we grew up in Revere and uh, we were two years apart. And we, you know, I found boxing at a young age. I found, uh, I found boxing when I was 15 years old. Right. So I was saying, I, I didn't have a uh, dad growing up, you know, he wasn't really in the picture. He bounced when we were babies and uh, my grandfather raised my brother and I. And so my whole life I, I grew up, my name was Travis Patrick Mazak. And then uh, before I turned pro in boxing, I wanted to carry my grandfather's name, Gambadella. And uh, I legally changed my name. You know, I went through the process and uh, I legally changed my name to, to Travis, uh, my middle name now, Mazak, and then my last name, Gambadella. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I grew up, I always had a passion for fighting and boxing. I, um, you know, I found my way as a young kid into the gym. And uh, I kind of bounced around a lot. You know, I, I had all my amateur fights out of Somerville Boxing Club. Um, and when it came time that I wanted to turn pro and I wanted to take that leap, you know, I I, um, I knew I had to grow. And um, and uh, I took that leap and I went out actually to California. I went out to California and I chased it. Um, and in 2016, I went out there and I drove from uh, Fort Bragg, like two hours north of San Fran, Right. I went down the coast and I just went in and out of gyms and uh, and then I ended up finding my home in Ventura, California at uh, Knuckleheads Boxing. Yeah, I do the experience that I, I mean, I kept the journal the whole time and uh, it, it's something that I, I cherish. You know, it was it was a great time in my life where I really found myself. And I found boxing, you know, I found like my professional path. Um you know, I ended up getting picked up. I, I got, uh, I was a paid spar partner for, I don't know if anyone remembers Victor Ortiz, great dude. He put me on the map as a paid spar partner. So I was able to, you know, make a home in Ventura. And then uh, I ended up turning pro in 2017. 
And uh, yeah, it was great, man. I've been chasing it ever since. You know, I had my had my ups and downs, that roller coaster, but uh, but box is something that's just a part of me to my last breath. To your last breath, Trav. Let's slow down, man. So when you was in California, the two of the eight one eight, man, that's out in the valley, man. I know I used to live out there, Trav. I used to live in California, yeah. man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So when you was out there, Trav, you was what was it? That internal compass that boxing gave you that you said there is no plan B. This shit got to be me. I got to make this work. What was it when you knew Trav ain't no plan B? So it was something. So that right there is something beautiful, right? Because it, that was some inherent in me that I didn't even know it was there, right? So I had this thing that I just woke up every day, and it was it was like that little guy on my shoulder, and he was poking me every day, and he was saying, "Get to work." get to work and I didn't even know what it was but I just knew that I had to put the work in and I had to just keep going and then it, it dude it brought me on this like crazy journey where I met so many beautiful people and and got so many cool experiences out of it, it, it it's uh it, it really is like you know it's, it's part of my life it's something something great wow wow so yeah it, it was inherent it was just inherent in my, in my soul it was something that just like I needed I needed that victory. I needed my hand raised like I needed that air in my lungs. Like it, it was something that just like yeah, man, it was just something that just like took over me, you know? And I I'd, I'd work when I was in town, when I was still in Boston, I I uh I used to work for this guy Frank De Pasquale. I used to work in like nightclubs and in restaurants as like a concierge, I'd say. And uh in my amateur fights, they were always like a Friday Saturday night, but I always had work. So I had to go to the USA Commission, the Boxing Commission. I'd be like, listen, can I fight first? Or can I fight at the beginning? Because they do it by weight. And usually uh, I was 165 class. I'd be in like the middle of the cod. But I had to like, hey, I got to go to work. Like, you know, can we make this happen soon? Yeah. And they, you know, they, they always hooked me up. They did. They always took care of me. They let me fight first, do what I got to do. And then I had to go straight to work, you know. And I got to work all night and then get up and chase it, you know, get on the road running. Trap, I love what you said, man. Let's, I'm on. I'm going to have to use that. You said, I woke up and I said, man, I got to go chase. Let's talk about that mindset, Trav. Mm -hmm. Because that right there, you said, I woke up this morning. I'm good. Now let me go chase it. Let's talk about that, Trav. The difference between when those that chase it and those that don't. That look at others yeah. that do chase it. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's something uh, I truly believe, right? So, so. You know, now we're going to get a little deep, right? So, so you know, here we, are, start, Trav, let's get yeah. <laughs> here we are in 2025, right? Uh, well, you know, humans have been around for a very long time, hundreds of thousands of years. And, and at one point in time, we had none of this external stimulation that, that, that set us off, right? And all we had was our mind and in, in, in the physical touch of the world around us. And before all that mental stimulation of the outside world, we had to search within to find our purpose and find and find what drives us. And 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 I think what separates those those top tier people that just excel is the fact that they can see that. You know, and, and I'm not saying I'm on this high horse. I'm just saying like you know, you got to be able to look through all this because all this ain't real. You know, all this stuff, you know, the phones, the, the, the technology, the screens, like that shit ain't real. That, you know, oh, and, and oh. what's real is what, is what, is what puts your mind at ease. And that when you hang it up at the end of the day, you know that you did everything you could. And, and that's all that matters because, you know, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, I live by this, uh, I, not live by, but I had the saying that I always like keep in the back of my mind. Sugar Ray Leonard said, uh, he said, he said, when I'm gone, I just want to be remembered as a man that tried. Come that's on. It. That's me. That's it. That's, that's my motto, Trap. I got to that's try. It. That's it. If I didn't try, then I don't know what the what would happen or what could have happened. It's all uh, it's all a what if shit. It's all you know. It's a, it's it's all what if. And then another thing I, I, I'm a firm believer of is um is uh before you leave this existence, just give more than you take. Give Come more on, than you take. Is that's it. Just just give more than you take. That's all, man. And 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 it will come full circle. And I and I promise you, it, you're gonna have a better day. You wake up, you have your health. And that's and that's it, man. You and you could chase it. Ooh, I love that, Travis. You didn't just bless my audience, man, with some deep stuff, brother. Yeah. 
the thing about you that it was is refreshingly, and you shouldn't judge the book by its cover. I'm I, people do it with me. They see a bunch of tattoos and they don't think, oh, this guy's a really deep, intelligent person. And you think boxing, pugilistic, you know, sport. Right. You don't think, Travis, you're one of the smartest people I've ever been around, man. I, I appreciate I, I gotta, that, Mac. Thank no, you. No, no, I gotta take a moment. You're a voracious reader as well. Let's talk yeah. about the mental aspect of that as well. Now, when did that love for self-education come in at? Because you, the stuff that you and I talked about, they ain't teaching yeah. this shit in the classroom. That's self-education. Yeah. Where, where yeah. does that come from, Travis? How is it important is that? So when I was a kid, I was saying that, you know, the, the final moment when I was 15, I, you know, I found boxing. But what actually pushed me to it was the fact that you know not having a dad, my you know, my my grandfather died. No, it's, it's not like a you know poor me thing. It's just how it played out, how it played out, right? So he he passed away. I'm searching. I'm a young kid. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Uh, you know, I turned to booze and and drugs. I end up having an incident where I overdose and I and I have this this pivotal moment in my life that I literally I wake up and it's like I'm either gonna continue on this path and end up dead in a in an alley or I'm gonna do something where I am satisfied with this existence and I could find that purpose of why I'm here. And, and, and that shit doesn't even come, you know, that, that, that's not something that just comes overnight. And, and you know, for a long time, and even now it's like, I feel as if I have this, this, this drive for boxing and this, and this, and this aspiration for glory. But even as I, I started 35 in February, I got 12 professional fights. Uh, I got, you know, a couple dozen amateur fights. Um, you know, I, I got a lot of, of life experience that I'm learning now that that was my purpose to get that. But now as I'm getting older, it's to give that. And we, you know, I, had, I, I got this, I got this after school program going with, with my friends in Revere where we have a gym open for the kids after school. And now I'm taking the kids to the fights. I'm I'm taping gauze in their hands. I'm training them, helping them with getting ready. And and, I, and it's something that I didn't even know existed. Like 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 because now I'm that coach that I never had. Right? I've been a I've been a nomad popping around in and out of gyms. You know, I'm that I'm that guidance or that role model that I never had. I never had a fucking man in my life. I never had a father. No one showed me how to shave. No one, you know, no one showed me no, and all that shit. And and now it's like it came full circle, like right. So I thought my purpose and all this time I'm gonna be a world champ, this, that, and next, and that's great. That's great to drive towards that. But uh, but now it's like, well, I gathered all this shit. What am I gonna do with all this shit? Well, I'm gonna oh, give it to someone else, man. I'm gonna oh, give yeah. it. I'm gonna give it to the next person, and then maybe they could build off that, and then just pay it forward to the next. That's why I say you, you gotta, you gotta before you leave, man. You gotta give more than you take. You gotta give more than you take. Trav, we can't real. speak past that, man, that, 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 that bombshell. You said, I gathered all this. To, I got it. What do I yeah. do with it? It's too right, it right, to right. That's it. That's my, Give that it to that the next you person. Your purpose. Give it to the next person. Yeah. Yep. All this. All this. So, so one thing too, I, when I, so, 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 so one thing too, when I, when I was younger, um, I found this like, this weird obsession with understanding things, not even like understanding things, just like I came to this weird obsession with like learning things, right? Cause you don't know what you don't know. Right. And then you learn more and you're like, Oh, well, what else is there to know? And I went on this path and I actually ended up getting my, uh, not that it's anything, but I ended up getting my bachelor's in physics from the University of Massachusetts. And yeah, I got my degree in physics in the University of Massachusetts, and uh, and and it, and it helped me so much that I didn't even realize it now. Again, like I said, until I'm older, because now like I'm seeing why I did that, and it's just to have a more grasp on my reality, right? Because today is the oldest I've ever been. It's the youngest I'll ever be. Man. And it's the wisest I've been yet. So Ooh. if I can just build on that and just take that 1% more tomorrow, then I'm better off than I was yesterday. You know, like, like th there's, there's so much that comes with this experience of existing. And it's not just get up, 
go to work, come home, go to bed, and do it over. There's so much in between that that, like I said, this modern day clouds that vision. And if it's one thing anyone could take from this, from hearing me speak, is get up and find your purpose. And it, it ain't it ain't working at a desk. It ain't banging hammers. It ain't you know. It, it's 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 the existence of us. And if I can make your vision a little bit closer to what you think it is by helping you, that's what it is. That, that's what it is, man. Yeah, but that's gonna bless a lot of people. You said that, man, but I, I, I like that you said I'm as oldest I've ever been. I'm as young as I'm ever going to be today. Yep. And I'm as wise as I've, I, 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 right. I, I've been thus far. And you say do that every yep. day, one day at a time. Wow. That's it. Wow. That's it. I tell you something else too, Mac. When uh, when when you and I when you and I were working together, uh, that was actually I was drinking still then, and I haven't drank now. I haven't drank since uh, August of uh, of 2022. And not that that you know, not that I'm anything or that's anything, but that I didn't even realize was another thing in my life that kind of like hazed the real picture. You know what I'm saying? Like um, there was a saying that I kind of developed too was because. There's a lot of sayings I keep on saying, but uh, but you know, as you get older, right? I I kind of made a analogy to boxing, right? You're in the ring, you get smashed with a good shot, but you don't go down. Well, maybe you do. You get up, and everything's kind of fuzzy. And then as time goes on, everything becomes less and less fuzzy, and you get that clear picture back. Well, to translate that to life, Come on, the, as you grow and get older. Everything gets just like a little bit less fuzzy. And then you wake up one day and it's like everything is clear for some reason. And everything seems real like you're aware. And it's probably these last couple of years where, you know, it could attribute to not drinking and, and not harming my body like that. But everything hasn't been this clear. Like the, right now, it's probably the most clear it's been in my existence. I'm the, like I said, you know, I'm the oldest I've ever been. I'm yes, the sir. youngest I'll ever be. And I'm the wisest I've ever been. And yes, sir. It's, if I, like I said, you take that into tomorrow and you just go one day at a time, one step at a time. Travis, I'm really proud of the fact that, you know, you haven't had a drunk drink, man, since almost two years. Let me, let me, can you give some advice for those that are, that are, that are struggling, man, with alcoholism, uh, even on the, even functionally? Functional alcoholics, you know what I mean? Um, what advice do you have? And, and can you expound just, just a little bit on that track? We don't have to go on right. the long seat. It's a little quick about that. But just what was that moment when you said, you know what, enough of this right here is clouding my picture. I got to stop. Can you give some encouragement and advice to those struggling with that same thing? It's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear me? Yeah. It was yeah, coming up. You there? Yeah, yeah. You're good, bro. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so I mean, if it, it th think about that as uh, as day one, you know, like, uh, there's that thing that, you know, on social media, you see, uh, I think it's The Rock that said it. It's like, what is it, like, day one? Day one? Or, it's, you know, it's something about most time. All it takes is just one day, man. Just you wake up and you realize that, like, it could be better. It doesn't have to be like this. It could always change. And and that's the thing. You're in control of that. Like, a lot of people get tied up in this in this facet of, like, being upset about things that out of uh, that's out of their control. Come but on, there's man. one thing that's in control all the yeah. time, and that's yourself. You always have your decision of free will. Yes, and if sir. you want to be better or be in a better state, then it starts with you. And that's it, man. It, your day could always be better. It could always be worse. But what it is, is it's yours. So whatever you want it to be, make it, man. Paint the picture. Ah, come on, yeah. preach, preach, Travis. <laughs> that's All it, right. man. You, Paint your picture, and and that and that's one of the things that I that I love about is that I I want to be there or to help and to push, and if someone needs that, dude, 
fucking hit me up. My social media is going to be on this. If you need someone to talk to, send me a fucking message, dude. I'm all, like, we're all human. We're literally all in this together. Like, that's it. You know, Travis, I just, it is, man, one thing about it, bro. Um, You good? Uh, I'm going to get out of here. Somebody rolled up on me. All right. So, Trav, you made, you made a great point, man. No matter what, you control your day, brother. That It couldn't have been said no better than that, man. Not at all. Not at all. That's it. That's it, man. That, that's all. And all these outside factors, all these outside, you know, intrusions, like, you know, it, it, it that's what it is. It's an outside. It, it, it's out of your control, man. If, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it's not something you're doing, not something you're thinking, not something you're involved in, then it, it's really, you know, out of your control. Let it be, man. Let it be. Wow. All right, Trav. I got to get you in the ring, man. Let's talk about some boxing now. Let's talk about the scientific part of boxing. Because to the naked eye, Trav, they just think it's a bunch of dudes in there like a street fight. Can you give the difference between street fighting and the science of actually boxing? Absolutely. So if you're in a street fight, if, if you're looking for street fight advice, be first. <laughs> uh, but, but no, in boxing too, we always say, in, in, uh, <laughs> we, we say that in uh, amateurs too, though, be first, because you know, amateur boxing, you're, you're point fighting. But yeah, no, there's, there's so much, man. There's, there's, uh, there's, so, many, there's so many factors to, to boxing, and, and you really don't see that, you know, until that 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 fight game progresses, and, and as you you get in there and you and you get more experience, it's wild. You get like this tunnel vision, and everything really like slows down, and you can just see so much more. And and that's a kind of cool thing about working with a lot of the amateurs now. A lot of the kids and the amateurs like is because they have that green energy, that exciting energy, which is great. But um, but you know they're still at the beginning of their game. And now they get to sharpen their sword every day and just do those little things that separate being good and being great. You know, and my, my whole uh, my whole career, like I was saying, I, you know, I bounce around a lot. I'm always traveling for sparring. And, you know, it is kind of like a little like um, – a little like uh, you know, not 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 gassing myself up, but like when I go to like a gym I went to tonight, you know, I moved around with the guys and like I get you know all these compliments and it makes me feel good. It's great, but dude, I'm at the end of my game. So like, if you could take some or you have a question, dude, ask me. I'm gonna answer it. I'm not gonna. I'm not better than anyone else in here, dude. Like, I want you to learn just as much as I'm learning. And if you could fill your cookbook with with my recipes and they work for you, dude, take it and run. I hope you win a world title. <laughs> hey, just shout out my yeah, man. There's, there's so many. Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, dude, exactly. You win that world title, you're like, hey, remember that time I tied your gloves, dude? <laughs> That's it, dude. That's it, Trav. Let me ask you this, man. That's who, all, man. Who were the five? Your top. If we gotta, and if, if you don't, and we gonna wrap it up soon. But I want to know your top five boxes of all time and why. You don't mind giving me your top five any weight class. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Any weight class, but I want to yeah, know why like you that. pick each All right, box. so I'm going to go uh, right off the rip because my number one favorite uh, is, is Marvin Hatch. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yeah, I, I love this. Uh, so right at the rip, my number one all-time pound for pound is Marvin Hagler. Uh, Marvin Hagler was in the golden age of boxing. He was uh, one of the four kings, and uh, that man fought everyone. And he fought everyone. No one ever gave him a goddamn chance, and he fought everyone. A tidbit, a little a little thing, um, uh, a lot about him, but I know a lot about him. But, but one of the things was – when he was coming up and he was in the amateurs and he was in the amateurs with Sugar Ray, uh, Tommy Hearns is a little bit younger, but, uh, but he was coming up and, and then you got Roberto Duran and, and Sugar Ray went to Marvin. And he's like, well, why aren't you going to go to the Olympics? Like, why aren't you going to like try to go further with the amateurs? And he said, well, I got a family to feed and oh, yeah, I got, I got to feed myself and, and I want to turn pro and make money. Dude, his first pro Sorry, dude. I don't know why that keeps cutting up. It dropped it. 
But go ahead, Trav. You uh, were saying sorry. Yeah, so uh, you know, his first fight, he wanted to turn pro. He wanted to make money. You know, he's not, you don't make any money in the amateurs. They can't. They don't pay the amateurs. Um, so he wanted. Yeah, so he wanted to turn pro. He wanted to make some money. You know, he wanted to make some money fighting, doing what he loves. And, uh, you know, he, he turned pro. In his first fight, you know, he made like 150 bucks, something, something so little, middle school. And uh, and then you see someone like Sugar Ray that then went to the Olympics, and he ended up fighting for his first fight was like thousands in that time, which is a lot of money, probably like ten or $15,000. And, uh, and doing that, right, is something that I also learned that when you stay in the images, you build a name for yourself. But he turned pro, and now when he turned pro, he had to fight everyone just to make his name. And he didn't back down from anyone. And uh, so, yeah, so Marvin Hagler is my number one. And then, uh, and just for the record, seeing that we're on record, he beat Sugar Ray when they fought. Whatever. Ah, he lost the decision, okay. but, you know, is what it is. Uh, but he won that fight. And, uh, and then my. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, and then, I'm gonna say my number two was was uh, Salvador Sanchez. Salvador Sanchez was like 27 and 0, and he ended up dying at like 23 years old in a car wreck. He was a uh, Mexican style prize fighter. Uh, he was already a world champ. He, I believe, would have ended up going down as one of the greatest of all time. He was a lightweight fighter. And uh, you know, one of those Mexican styles coming forward, head movement, throwing off the, throwing off the movement. Um, that's my number two. My number three is just because of who he is, is uh, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is like probably one of my idols. Like the way he just is for the people and how he just brought people together, and and his it's just everything about that man, his energy and everything that he gave to us while he was alive. Is something that I will cherish forever. Um, number four, I'm going with Triple G. Getting more present day. Um, number four was you know Triple G. He was a he was a heavy hitting dude. Another guy that never really got the the rep 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 uh, the rep that he did. So Triple G is is number. Th no, number four, right? Because Ali was three. So who who we got for number five? Who we wrapping it up with? Yep, yep. So, who's so number yeah. So number, number five. five. So number five. I'm gonna throw it up is is uh, Le Vasily Lomachenko. Uh, Vasily Lomachenko. Uh, he he set the record for fighting for a world title fight in uh, in like his. I think I believe it was a seventh in his seventh professional fight. He fought for a world title, and uh, he ended up losing the first time he went out for it. But then he won it when he fought for it again. I think one or two fights later, he ended up winning uh, for a world title in like under ten fights as a professional. And uh, he's just uh, such a great dude. He, he's another human that I got to meet in person. I got invited when I was living in California. I got to invited to uh, their gym, and uh, I got rounds with Alexander Best Buten. Um, and it was just an all-around unreal experience getting to meet him and uh, Lomachenko and his, and his people. It was, it was really a welcoming thing. It was awesome. Wow. So those is Travis Top 5. All right, Travis, one yeah. question. Where do you rank Floyd Mayweather an all-time great, or do you even uh, respect him as an all-time great? So, yeah, I mean, that's a popular question, especially with boxing, because Floyd is Floyd. Um, I think that Floyd is definitely within, like, a top five, uh, you know, pound for pound. If you really look at it, like, not personal favorites and just statistical analysis of it, um, you know, Floyd, Floyd could even, you know, I shouldn't even say top five. I should say top three because he did it, man. Like, he, he, if you don't like him, that's fine. That's, you know, but he did it and you can't take any of that away. Like, he used his mind and his body, but more his mind, and he won the game. He won, dude, he's 40. He, he retired 49 and 0 with hundreds of millions of dollars, if not a billion dollars, and he did it. Like so, you can't hate a man for that. Like you, you cannot agree with his, his, his like 
how he carries himself or how he acts, you know, as an individual, as a human, that's fine. But logistically and analytically, if you look at what that man did, dude, he won the game. He won the game. Like, he has all of his wits. He has all of his mind. He has all of his health. All of his, now he has all of his fortune. And he's, you know, you can't hate him for that. You could not like him for, you know, how he acts and the shit he says and does. That's fine. But, like, what he did as a boxer and as an athlete, you def- you can't. That man got no dirt on his shoulders, man. He did it. <laughs> he did it. He did it. He did it, Draft. Well, well said, my brother. Well said. All right, Trav, what's coming up for you last, man? And we out of here, brother. What you got coming up? Yeah, um, coming up on the horizon, um, I'm hoping to fight in uh, May or June. I just coming off a win in November. Um, you know, um, uh, it was a great fight. It was a, it was the heaviest I ever fought, which I feel good at. I'm not cutting as much weight fighting in the 165 to 168 range, the super middleweight. Um, you know, I'm 8-2-2 two and two as a pro. I got 12 special fights. I got four knockouts. Uh, coming off of a nice knockout, knocked out a uh, dude in uh, 2 minutes and 47 seconds of the first round. Came out guns blazing, which I wanted to get. Get rounds in and I wanted to box, but he wanted to bang, so we banged and you know, <laughs> is what it is. But uh, you know, on to the next now. Look at you know, looking for that good opportunity. And uh, I want to be fighting on a big stage hopefully soon to end my career on like a nice big stage. Well, I tell you what, when you get to that big stage, I'll be there, man, to support you, my brother. <laughs> I dig it, man. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, man. Hey, well, listen, Always guys, a pleasure hitting you, man. Always a pleasure. Hey, man, it's a pleasure, man. You a visitor to the show, uh, Trav, man. Again, man, nothing but love for you. I'm proud of you. You're an amazing human being, man. Thank you for blessing us with so much wisdom and, and then your time, my brother. Hey. Again, man. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely, man. I'm going to come to Boston, man, one day. I got some interest up there in Boston. So gonna... yeah. Come. Yeah. Come, man. I'll show you all around. It'll be great, dude. It'll be great. Yeah, dude. I'm going to come up there, man, and, uh, you know, uh, give me some seafood and uh, go some rounds on that boxing bag. I'm not fucking with you, but I'm going to get. Yeah. Oh, hold the mitts for you, dude. I got mitts. Yeah, dude. It'll be great. All right. Well, that's it. Well, hey, guys. Hey, much love to our guy, Travis Gambardella. We are so proud of this, brother. Make sure y'all hit the like, subscribe, man. It's been an amazing episode. We out. Cigar Chats and Mac.